Hello everyone, are you ready for another story? Because it's a time for another story time with Wookiee, aka Day in the Life of Wookiee, the only video series that has technically two names to it. So, today's story is all about Orc Collection. The reason being is that yesterday was actually the day Orc Collection officially stopped because it went from Orc Collection 1 to Orc Collection 2, aka Jump Tyson. Um, and because of that, I've had a lot of memories of Orc Collection in the mind, so I figured, hey, why not share them and talk about specifically the good days of Orc Collection. I uh, hope you like this video. If you do, um, you can leave a like. I appreciate a whole bunch. Comment down below if you remember any of the Orc Collection days, or you just at this point, it's something that you remember the, the 400 of us or so that played it, <laughs> the game they talk about a whole bunch, and subscribe to me if you want more videos. So... Let me start with the first thing. What is Orc Collection? Funny enough, when Orc Collection was first revealed, it was... It released... It was kind of revealed in a completely different landscape. It was shown off in um, V-Jump. And I want to say it was around... The 120% leads days of Dokkan. It was around the time I was starting to get tired of Dokkan. <laughs> and I want to say it's around 120% lead meta is when I... Um, started to fall out of the game a little bit but when it was announced they had like a manga art panel of Kid Goku doing the punch and it was like you know the the Ozuru punch something that was, that was at that time not in Dokkan yet and it was like holy shit they're gonna put this in so we kind of saw it as like oh my god this is gonna be a Dokkan killer this thing has absolutely everything from Shonen Jump and at the time, the gacha market was very different for Shonen Jump games. Because Dokkan had kind of like started the idea of, yo, this could work out. And the Naruto one was kind of up there and running. And I think the Bleach one was there. And somehow JoJo Record something was had been around for like 10 years or so. But after Dokkan kind of hit, the idea of Shonen Jump gacha games was widely accepted and kind of looked forward to. Um... Which I guess just really shows how popular Dokkan was, is that the idea of like, oh man, this, but, you know, made in a later year of Dokkan, so hopefully better, that sounds awesome. So they showed off War Collection there, um, I thought it looked cool because Kid Goku was, more, Kid Goku doing the Ozuru Punch is one of my favorite Shonen Jump moments of all time. Uh, the game came out, and it was like awesome it was su it was super awesome at launch because the animations were basically like motion comics of the actual manga panels and it created this effect of like and you also use the actual manga art for the base card as well and it was really cool to see all the art and all the animations um and it was it was really something special to see all the animations kind of go crazy pop off the only thing that was kind of a bummer is that at launch there wasn't a lot of story stuff because there just wasn't very much of it. And then when the first event hit, you were like, oh yeah, this is good, this is great. Second event hit, this is not so good. This is not as great. But the cool thing was is they had released limited units with like some awesome specials and moves like that. I think the first one was Kurapika, followed up by Yugi, and Yugi had Exodia, and that Exodia was just, oh my god, seeing the Exodia from um, War Collection is maybe one of the top animations for Exodia out there. <laughs> it was so beautiful, it was so amazing. Um, but around when they did the third event, which I believe was... No, it wasn't. If I could look at the actual list of limiteds, which I think is still up on OCHD. If I take a quick gander at them. Let me see if I can find it. Um... It has really been a long time where I'm just like, hey, can I remember this actually? Let's find out. Let me see, okay. The Mickey Man was the first year. Was, I want to say Kenshiro was either the... I think he was the fourth. No, the third was Son Goku. Son Goku had to be the third. Because I remember... Not being able to get Yugi, being unable to get Kurapika, or must have actually been AI. I, the um, girl from Video Girl AI, she was, I think, the second or third. But Goku was basically after him, and that was the first limited I ever got, and I was super hyped for it. It was awesome. Um, just unbelievably awesome. But the problem is, is that with the events coming out, it started to be all a little samey. And then the even bigger issue was in PvP. Um, they had buffed 
This character, Bobo Bo, from the manga Bobo Bo 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 Bo, you may remember him as the dude with the nose hair stuff. Um, they released him, and it kind of killed a lot of people's motivation to keep going. He run roughshod over everyone. You either had Bobo Bo, Bo, you didn't have Bobo Bo, Bo <laughs> in terms of winning. And then eventually they released uh, Sket Dance characters, and the Sket Dance meta was maybe what also killed the other 50%. So it's not like it's a. <laughs> It's a real shame of how we lost so many people right at that moment because it was like Bobo Bo was bad enough to deal with, but then you had Bobo Bo teamed up with Sket Dance, and that was basically enough to, I think, kill what was likely 70% of the audience at that point. That's when we started like losing a lot of the like the Twitter rewards when they'd be like, hey, get this many retweets and we'll give you some cool, awesome rewards. Um, and we would usually always fail them, and they would always go, hey, don't worry, here's the rewards anyway. We know, thank you very much for supporting the game. The other problem with it is that it was stupid fucking expensive. You had to basically use vendors, and vendors I don't think really exist anymore. But this is how I understood vendors to be. But vendors would basically buy um, play cards for that were super cheap, that they could find overseas, where it was easier to buy them over there, and then they would sell you um, hey, this many, this much of so-and-so would give you this much of this, um, currency, and you're good. And the idea was is that, what, because they were able to buy it so cheap, they could sell it to you cheaper than it was on the actual site, and that was actually the only way you could really play or Collection, because the prices were just stupid expensive. Like, way too expensive, I would say. Um... I doubt that that was the only, that was what, how I'll say right now, I doubt that's what led to our collection kind of dying if you're wondering, hey, was it the vendors that took it down? No. If anything, the vendors kept it alive for a little bit longer because you could actually buy stuff within reason and stuff like that, and that was nice. But yeah, there was like a lot of hurdles to the game, and I think the reason it was so expensive was that it had Shonen Jump in the name, so of course you had to pay $100 for a multi and a half. It was, yeah, if you're wondering hey, how much did $100 get you, it was about that. Uh, it was really rough, really bad, really rough. But I stuck with it, I kept with it, even after I think everyone else had kind of abandoned it. I kept going with it, I kept playing with it, I eventually found other people, such as Rick, who was a part of the 13 Nights of Halloween. Uh, he played Orc Collection, so we kind of, that's actually how we got to know each other more, is that we both played Orc Collection during the Dark Days. Um, and eventually, Orc Collection was kind of able to get back by releasing Dai, and then they started releasing Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, which was amazing. If you ever thought that the final move done by Gohan, the one-arm Kamehameha with the, the father-son Kamehameha, uh, looked great and stuff like Dokkan, the Orc Collection version using the actual manga panels was fucking beautiful so good they've never been able to make another good version of that animation since i want to say maybe fighters come with closest and that's like a full-on um console game so good fair play to them um but around the time super saiyan 2 gohan was coming out i was able to get zen back in but i was also more most importantly i was actually able to get d free into the game and getting D free actually helped a shit ton because he was able to show so many people like, hey, here's this game that has a whole bunch of Shonen Jump characters, and it honestly like helped so much to get more people into it. And I think if we had only been able, if I had only been able, I always, I, I know at a certain extent it wasn't my fault that our collection went because it's literally impossible for someone like me. the bad business decisions are what killed our collection. But I always feel if I had just been the YouTuber I was now, as opposed to the one I was back then, I think I would have been able to help out Or Collection survive those early days a little bit more, because I would have been able to be like, yo, check this out. And the funny thing is, is that Die from Dragon Quest would eventually become much more popular. But at the time he was released and he was the best unit, it was kind of like, who, Die? A lot of people didn't know who Die was, but when Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Day came out, he was like, oh shit, yeah, this is what's going to bring it back. And thankfully, by the time Super Saiyan 2 Gohan was coming back, the meta had changed so much that it was actually a good place for a lot of people to enter at that time. Because if they had entered during the Sket Dance days, I don't think they would have survived again. 
I think it would have been very bad. But thankfully, with the release of Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, we were able to get a lot more people into the game. D Free helped a whole bunch. Like he always did videos for the hype units, which were always um, characters he liked and always thought him. He actually D Free also helped a whole bunch for me as well, um, because at that point my channel was still kind of enough. Floundering isn't the right word. It was just kind of like I would upload every like three weeks or so and be like, hey, here's a video. And it wasn't until Ore Collection came out that I actually started releasing videos on a more consistent basis. Like, not every single day, but almost every single day. And then we would start doing Shorn and Ore Smorgasbord, and that was very helpful. And that was, I think, one of the most fun podcasts we ever did, which was dedicated to Ore Collection. Chimputi Jams is almost as fun as the Ore Collection days, but it, it's a different beast. Because me and Zen are kind of entering this game from... He knows a lot and I don't know enough, and I don't feel like I don't know enough and yet to kind of give my opinions on the actual unit stuff. I can only really talk about the jump characters. Whereas Jumputi, um, not Jumputi, uh, Shonen or Smorgasbord, I was actually very knowledgeable and I could give my opinions about what I would want to kind of see in units and stuff like that. And I think the only other game that I can really do that in is Fate Grand Order. I can't do it in Dragalia because I always feel like my specific wants are different from what the game kind of wants to build stuff towards like especially after nihility like i have no idea like here's my number one thing make everything nihility proof boom it works but i digress so yeah after super saiyan 2 gohan we had the first year anniversary it was really cool because we actually were finally able to successfully blow out a fucking twitter reward and it was so funny because when we did it, there was so many Japanese people because there was a lot of people in English responding when they would, they would at most get like four responses to a tweet. Um, suddenly a lot of like English speakers would be like, ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, my boy. Oh, Ichigo. We're looking. Let's go. And <laughs> their response was, of a lot of foreigners in here. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there were a lot of foreigners in the game. Um... Which was cool. I always thought it was very cool. Uh, but unfortunately it could never last. Um, eventually it was declared that they were going to be doing Jump Tyson. And then I think OCHD probably was able to give a better insight of like, yeah, or collection from the kind of jump was very shaky. Like there was supposed to be an Aureli event, but early on things weren't going. The, like I, I assumed they didn't hit the big milestones that they thought they were going to reach with how they had... Um, all these Shonen Jump properties, but they just weren't making enough money, so they had to pivot and start going towards a lot of like crazy popular series, and that kind of fundamentally changed a lot of things when you're going specifically for the most popular things to kind of make money, and you end up missing a lot of the good in-between Jump stuff. They end up getting kind of relegated to the side characters and stuff like that, you know. Stuff like that, which is unfortunate. Stuff that Jimputi, um Heroes is able to avoid because they have they have it basically locked down, and they have a plan and stuff like that. And the other problem was is that Or Collections, of course, was very bad when it came to releasing stuff. <laughs> Just the absolute worst. They would take fucking forever. Like at most, you would get maybe f uh, five units a month, and most of them would be free to play. And then you get one big one, except for near the end of its life, where there was suddenly like ten. But yeah, it was real rough because I've, I actually think I've said it before that on the day that Ore Collection was announced as being discontinued was the day Dragalia was going up. And Dragalia would be eventually the game that got me out of my slump um, because after Ore Collection was announced to being stopped, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. That game was basically everything I ever wanted out of a game and it also, for a gacha game specifically, and... It was a main feature of my channel, and now it's gone. What do I do? Do people even care now that I'm not talking about this? And thankfully, with Dragalia, I was able to kind of get the groove back in. And then with Fake Grand Order, I was able to do, like, show more. That ended up exploding even more. I should honestly be doing more Fake Grand Order videos and start practicing towards that, but it's very hard for me to juggle two things at once it's not at times. And, yeah, and I would eventually also figure out that people just liked me for who I am. Because, you know, people watch these type of videos as well. And I thank you guys for that. And I think with that, I think that's a good way to kind of sign off on the Ore Collection talk. Yeah. 
Uh, so definitely a game that's very important to me, which is why I always like to bring it up, even though most people would like to probably at this point move on. I always like bringing it up because there's just no way to play Horror Collection anymore, and I don't really want it to be left forgotten. Um, I've always uh, teased the idea of doing my own parody version of War Collection, which would be continuing the game except for on my own way and with parodies of the manga instead. I think I call I called it Page Collector. Um, would be the thing I'd call it. Um, if I ever get good enough to make a game, hey, maybe. But yeah. I think that's good enough for this video. Thank you very much, everyone who watched it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to tell me your memories of um, Shonen Jump or Collection, feel free to tell me. I just wanted to say something about this game because, again, as I said, very important and there's just no way for anyone to play it anymore. So, <sighs> till next time, everyone. That's the end of today's story. Goodbye. Have a good night. Peace.